Anyway, they put filters in the school and a lot of the health uh, problems improved. Uh, children who had asthma stopped using inhalers on a daily basis. They still needed their inhalers at home when they went into an electromagnetically dirty environment, but they no longer needed them at school. And one of the teachers there was a fourth grade teacher who had multiple sclerosis. Her symptoms were so bad, she didn't know the names of her students uh, in her class. She had about 20, 25 students. And she was planning on quitting teaching because her symptoms were so bad. When I found out about this, I decided to start research with people with MS. And I began to work um, with individuals, many of them who had physical disabilities. They had difficulty walking. They would use a cane or they would use a walker. Many of them also had cognitive difficulties. But because I was interested primarily in something that we could visually uh, document, um, it, I'm not going to show you the cognitive results. When I first started looking at people with MS, I didn't use any dummy filters. I wasn't interested in the placebo effect. I just wanted to find out if we cleaned up an environment in the home, and many of these people are restricted to their homes, they're not out working, um, could, it affect this, you know, could it affect their symptoms? And so I went in saying, I have no idea if this filter is going to do you any good, but if you're willing to participate, I'm willing to uh, look at your results afterwards. The first three people that we worked with had such miraculous results within a matter of a few days that I was beginning to doubt my own uh, ability to, to visually assess them. And I kept asking, you know, if a woman had MS, I'd go to her husband and say, did you notice a difference or is it just me, you know? And so I thought, we really have to videotape these people because no one's going to believe me. And so I'm just going to show you one of the people that we worked with. This is a woman who was in her 40s. Um, she had had MS for 13 years. This was the progressive type of MS, which doesn't uh, get any better. Uh, it simply gets progressively worse. And you can see here that we've published this, so it's in a peer review document. The levels of dirty power in her home ranged from 148 to 2,000, above 2,000. And the levels that were uh, above 2,000 were associated with a plasma television that her husband had purchased for her because all she could do was basically sit down or lie on the couch and, and um, uh, watch television. She used a walker. Her mother took care of her during the day, fed her. She couldn't feed herself, and her husband took care of her during the night. When I was interviewing her for the first time, she was sitting on her hands, and I asked why she was doing that. She says, because my hands shake. So I asked if she would hold her hands out still so that I could videotape them, and she did. Um, we put filters in. I'm just going to uh, uh, mention this. We put filters in, and we were able to significantly reduce the dirty electricity. But for several weeks, she documented her symptoms, and I just uh, videotaped her. This is how her hand shook uh, when we were um, measuring her. So you can see how difficult it would be for her to actually feed herself. Six weeks later, we terminated the study, and the, con the thinking was, if it hasn't done any good within six weeks, it's unlikely to, to help, um, because I was getting responses from people within a matter of a few days. And this is what happened after a six-week period. There was no change in her medication. She doesn't have re relapsing remitting MS, which means she isn't going to spontaneously get better. And these were the types of results that we were getting from people. Absolutely dramatic. The um, significance of this is that there's a lot of products on the market, including plasma TVs, but a lot of other things that produce dirty electricity. And we have to, um, including computers, for example, dimmer switches in our homes will, will produce this as well. And what we have to do is we have to alert manufacturers that this is not good biologically. And what they can do is they can put tuned filters into computers, they can put tuned filters into the plasma TV to absolutely eliminate this form of radiation. Uh, for those interested in buying a television, the liquid crystal displays are very clean electromagnetically. So if you've got a choice between plasma or LCD, I would strongly encourage you to use the LCD. The next example I'm going to give is with blood sugar uh, and a treadmill. And this is an example of a woman in um, New York. She's 57 years old. She's type 2 diabetic. She doesn't uh, take any kind of medication to treat her diabetes. She bas basically measures her blood sugar uh, in the morning, um, during the day if she feels anything abnormal. And uh, she regulates it with proper diet and with exercise. And once again, this is published in a peer-reviewed publication. And uh, this is what would happen to her blood sugar. And I, we use different uh, units in Canada. We use millimoles per liter, and you use milligrams per deciliter. Um, uh, so I'm go I've shown them in, in both ways. 
Um, these are three separate days where she measured her blood sugar. Here it was roughly about 190 or 200. And she would walk for 20 minutes and it would come down to 6.7 or 126. And that was very, that's the normal level. Uh, here it was very, very high. She had severe headaches at this time. She'd go for a 20-minute walk, would come down. So you can see how consistently she responds to exercise. Some days she didn't want to go outside. It was raining, and so she would work out on her treadmill. Treadmills have variable speed motors. They produce poor power quality, dirty electricity. And this is what would happen if she, pract if she did a 20-minute walk on her treadmill. This is her starting uh, blood sugar, and each time it went up. These are, once again, on three separate days. What does your doctor tell you? They tell you to exercise. They don't know the difference between a treadmill or walking outside. If you're a diabetic and you're electrically sensitive, then this is how you're likely to respond. And we think this might actually be, be a good diagnostic to use in doctor's offices uh, with diabetics. Simply put them on a treadmill for 10, 20 minutes, and if their, heart, if their blood sugar goes up, you know it's going in the wrong direction. We actually label this as a type 3 diabe diabetes, uh, and we, we classify that as uh, a diabetes that causes your blood sugar to change because of something in the environment as opposed to lack of insulin and some of these other things. What's the significance of this? Well, diabetes is becoming a pandemic. The levels are going up, particularly of adult onset diabetes. You can filter the electricity coming into your home. You can filter the dirty power that you're generating, and this will help diabetes. Your, your blood sugar um, enormously. Example number four, um, this is looking at your heart, and this is what Deb was mentioning. We did a study here in, in Colorado, so I'm going to spend just a little bit more time on this than I have on some of the previous ones. So we're looking at the heart and um, exposure to deck phones, and we asked a very simple question. The question was, do decked phones, these are the cordless phones that radiate 24-7, as soon as you plug them in, do they affect the heart? And the original um, uh, uh, name for deck phones was Digital European Cordless Telephony. It was invented in Germany, and unfortunately it's come across the uh, Atlantic Ocean. So the question we were asking is, when you plug the base station of a deck phone into a live outlet, it will, it will automatically send out uh, radiation. And I brought a deck phone with me and some uh, monitoring equipment. So during the panel, if we have time, I'll be very happy to uh, show this to you. And the question is, does it affect the heart in any way? And we used a heart rate variability monitor called Nerve Express. And I worked with Dr. Jeff Marangel from Pennsylvania, who's one of the leading experts in HRV in, in the United States. And he looked at all the results that we collected blindly. So this is a double blind study um, that we set up. The deck phone we used has a 2.4 gigahertz frequency. And we looked up guidelines uh, with um, safety code 6 in Canada, which is very same, I, almost identical to the Federal Communication Commission guidelines. And what they are is um, 1,000 microwatts per centimeter squared. Those are the guidelines you have both here in the United States that we have in Canada. The exposure for our deck phone was 3 microwatts per centimeter squared, which is 0.3% of the federal guidelines. And we had three-minute exposures, very short period exposures. The guideline in Canada for the general population is six-minute exposure, which means we don't have any long-term guidelines. So if, you, if you're using a cell phone, um, you know, it's one thing, but if you're living near an antenna where you're constantly being exposed, there are no federal guidelines. The difference between ours and yours is we have a six-minute guideline for the general population, and you have a 30-minute guideline for the general population. This is how we did the study. We had uh, subjects who volunteered. Um, they would lay down on a table or on a bed. We put the cordless phone two feet behind their head, uh, and we plugged it into a live outlet, which means it would radiate, or we plugged it into a dead outlet, and this was our sham exposure. So they could hear us plugging something in and unplugging something. We did it in a random fashion, so you know it wasn't in and then out, in and then out. Um, and then we monitored their heart 